want to do is get a coat or two on and then if it dries it will hold the succeeding coats, that's what I'm hoping. But it's meant to be waterproof so once this stuff, like any acrylic, is dry it should stay on. Right, getting our base coats on as you can see there, just starting to stick to it. So I'm just giving it a coat of, um, well, a coat of red at the minute and then going back to water to, to let the water do the resist and leave me some patterns here that might well give this lovely mottled effect of the pike. Also I'm going to be doing some airbrushing over this anyway but um, I hope to be. It's just to get the base colours on and base effects. I'm going to go a bit darker now and start to add some pretty deep blue and purple on the base of the tail up. Again, it's still not, it's still, even though I've got ink on it's resisting slightly, not ideal. It shouldn't be resisting like this now because I've got the coats on. And that should leave us with these lovely darks down, deep down in. It's a good job for a winter's day, really, but the wind is helping to dry quickly, so there's that to it. Sponge can be very useful for this as well. I'll try to tell for some of the times. Just take it off the, this end first. It's going to lose a bit of the colour, but it can't be helped. Now, I'd have to use the sponge if this is going to work because. I do need just to take it off the surface, not the whole, the whole thing, not what I want. I would have just been spending my time putting on the base coats of oranges, reds, yellows, and now I'm just working a little bit of green into it. And uh, a slight muffled pattern. As I say, I suspect I'm going to be doing some... Um, airbrush work over this later anyway. This is just to make a start on those, those base coats so when I glue it in I've got something to work with later. Okay, I'm now using an epoxy resin just to get things set into here before I use some filler at the end to finish it off. I've got the filler on all around the fins, the fins are on, so hopefully now all I've got to do is sand up and get the textures right. right while I'm waiting on uh, all that to dry, I'm going to take down with the sandpaper. So I think we're working on these little roach. Get the surf on blade and just start to shake them up. Well, we're going to use a little belt sander now to tidy this up. I've got the filler done on it now, I've got a little bit more work to do with the sander. of our two little bait fish with the fins in. You can't really see them because they're so clear at the moment but we need to reshape them a little bit more and tart them up. And we're going to have a go at putting a base coat onto the pike. Now we need some colour on it. I want to get some base coats onto here and I want to work first of all from a golden brown here. I'm going to put white areas in it later around to a grey uh, grey colour underneath. I also don't want to lose any of the Texturing these up, so I want to brush this right in and right out, coated. And just to the same thing there, brush later, I think I just want to get the basics. And you can see the scale texture a bit more now than I was trying to get, and was getting. So I'm coming to here a bit more. So I want the scale texture to come out and I rub paint across the surface. So that's why I want to use these mid colours first of all. Light against dark and dark against light to. Um, Try and show the pike out. Push that well in. Now let's try and make that very light grey, yellow and grey that we want to show through. 
through the textures. grey underneath there to let the white show against it. It's got a bit darker yet than that. I'll see. Yeah, I think I'll go a bit darker yet because I want that white to really show that side. Just a little bit darker grey at the start, start off with so that um, that's better. I do want this. I want the whites to show when I do put the textures on. I want to come up the side of the fish now. So I'm going to need a, a deeper colour. I'm going to want to go a green now. Working up my mid greens now over the, the light of the white and the grey we did earlier just to blend in and go my way down here before I do the airbrush work later. The other side will do the same. That's it, we'll turn it around so you can see. I want to work it well in because I don't want to lose my texture of the scales that I've got. A yellow, Prussian blue, a yellow ochre, sap green, Prussian blue at the moment, and a wee bit of black. And See what we get. I really do want to push the colour well into the scales. So we're getting the black on the top now and I'm just blending that down the sides. And it's just starting to feel this texture a little bit. Which we will do when I get the surface colours on. Side of his face, her face. Right, that's it for tonight. So that's it for this evening, and we'll go at the smaller fish tomorrow. The one thing I have noticed is that since this fish has been gluing, it's tilted, and I need to go in through here and put a pin in, I believe, right the way into here. To stop it from twisting like it is. My friend was asking me if I could make her a seagull with wide open wings gliding across the water. At least you offcut the ideal for that. There's the tail, there's the body, there's the head, and the wings are here. So that's what we'll use that for. Just move it up in time to cut out this small perch now. The hot knife, I hope. There we go. It's a different shape altogether to the other ones I've been doing. Up again. So now we just cut this out and we should be fully through that. And there we go. And it comes. And we've just got to go the other way now to get the shape right. Round that shape off, and we should be there. All right, now we just take that shape and start rounding off the edges. It's as simple as that. Pulling around and pushing, I think it'd be easier. That's good luck. Just about got the perch shape we want. Shoulder to him, so I'll just take that back 
a little bit more. There we go, nice little perch. Now I've just got to add the fins to that. Take a piece off the passage, passage tape to take the fins out of. Just one piece of the fine. Just big enough, yes, I think so. And then that will come down into the fish like that. Just going into the fish. A little slice. Then the tail, of course. So we want a tail that comes out on the wrist like this. And a little slot to come up into the fish. And that's marking all that. Right. That's all we're going to need on that. Just cut those out. Oh no, one, two, three, four, five, six, yes, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's it. And then my knife, this is before I do the other one, and I've got the right, big spiky thing going in here to be glued in. Should be far enough, I think. And we've got to wait the one down here as well. So that's that one. Like that. The tail's got to go in like that. So that, that knife goes in both ways there, and they should just slot into there like that. So they're not going to be, need to be glued in yet, but we'll do that in a moment. And that's it. Look. So we've got to just now do the serrated edges on those on that top fin. And if I'm careful with the scissors, I actually really need to go back in and do the. Um, veins on that in a minute. I hope you can see it. There's that wee fin with the um, serrations on it. Now if I put it into the fish it should look quite effective. Now, isn't, that, isn't that lovely? That, you can see that. I'm not just going to try to put it into the camera. You can see that there. It's uh, See the serrations on there. Looks lovely. So now we need to glue them up. Well then, I've got that done. Just need to a little bit of paste out and we'll just finish these off with a bit of car body filler and get the brownie bits. So we'll just make this job with what's left in this tin. It needs very little hardener I found, very little indeed. Just the slightest spittings is enough to set it off. Just a little bit like that is plenty. Uh, be surprised how fast this stuff will go off otherwise. As long as you've got it well mixed in, it will go. You can see it going pink even with that tiny amount. Now let's see if we can get this on. I'll use my fingers as well. That putting gloves on, which should be an idea. But to say, when you're dealing with all of this resins and stuff, you can wear a mask if you're sanding, of course, and so on, but I make sure that I have a very well ventilated room. Um, in this case I'm in my conservatory and um, the wind is coming in one door and out the other literally. It's taking everything straight outside. There we go. Just smooth that down. Fill in any holes that have Appeared. Turn it into a nice little fishy, that's for sure. And there we go, let that dry off. We've got our 
three fish there. Whilst they're drying off, I'm just going to go back to my pike and the fins and just look at the edges of those fins rather than being absolutely straight and undamaged at all or worn. I think we might just take a little bit out of the more natural feeling to it than being a perfect fish. And then the original has a little bit of a sort here and there where it's been torn through the ages. Just a touch here and there. Much, but just a bit. A little, little nick, maybe. But not quite so perfect. That's been that. Just only need this one or two little bits, I think, just to take a little bit. And if it's too perfect, it seems unreal. There's a small fish made and now ready for painting. I'll probably put some wires into them next so that I can support them. And just start working on the pike as well again with all the colours after I've got those done. So I'm going to start off my painting by my traditional methods using the brushes by hand. And then I think possibly later I'll be taking this to France to finish with the airbrush, especially around the mouth and those areas. But we'll see how we go. Let's start on these roach and rud first of all. I took a couple of smaller brushes and so we can do with them. Um, a couple like this should be adequate. Just a couple of brushes like that, eh? What I want to do is blend these colours around and work around from my lights to my dark. So this is dry as it just about. These acrylics dry pretty fast anyway. But I do want to work with a lot of glazes as well. So I'm going to start off with some yellow ochre under here. Yellow ochre and white, maybe a wee touch of lemon because it's uh, a little lighter there. It's fairly light underneath, but I just want to get this lovely shine of yellow coming through here yeah. to white underneath. Right through his tail, we're going to go much greener there in a minute. We're going to build these, these colours up in a glaze. So it's very, very soft and muted. Right through over the whole thing so we can... Just bring up the white underneath him in a minute. I just want to get this colour on first of all. I've got some eyes to stick onto it. I'll show you those in a minute. Ah, that's got a base coat of... That lovely light yellow cream on it. I think this is alright. Good, all right, we'll carry on and try and paint a bit more of this perch. Eh? Now that the colour's dry, I want to gradually bring around these orange fins first of all, I think. So that's just, just a wee touch. Front of these fins. That should help fill it. down with the darks. Let's get the um, brown colours on the yellow ochre first of all. So it's a very brown sort of sort of muck in that. that. It's a lovely brown colour that's coming down. And these stripes from here.
And at the bottom here, quite a very light blue. Tint this down here to a little bit lighter blue. Lost the stripes on the perch a little bit, let's come back on that. He's looking better. I think that's about it. We'll put an eye on that and get that varnished, I think. What have I got? Oh, that's good. So you can see the perch now. I think he's about finished. There they are, he's got a little perch. Eyes, maybe glass eyes are a bit strong, I just need to take them down a bit. Well, if I want to put the eyes on with Aldite now before I carry on painting, so they're quite effective, I'm going to take these eyes off, which haven't stuck properly. They want to go alright. And uh, mix up a little bit of Aldite. bits of it with this, trying to get some of these scales in. Painted up the base colours underneath and I just want to get these very light colours for the scales. It's reflecting on if you're not going to paint silver paint on, we're going to paint a bit of extra colours to mimic the silver and the reflection in the world. So let that dry in. Pick up a little bit more glue and just stick those eyes back on again. And we'll continue with the wee roach for the moment. And we'll get the reflection of the sky as a blue. Hopefully onto this to get the feeling of the silver. Right, let that dry a bit and we'll use a smaller brush for a minute. Waiting on these other things to dry, I think it's um, time to start making another go on the pike. I want to start bringing these textures out on top of the pike here, so I'm going to start using a flat brush. I don't want to go right into the, just going across the surface of the fish. I come down here to let this texturing show.